Hey traders, David Frost, My Strategic Forecast. You're here for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis. Today is Thursday, March 19, 2020. We are looking at a daily chart of the SPY, or Spider, which is the proxy for the S&P 500. What do we have on the docket today? What do we have on the board? We have a lot of stuff on the board. The market was relatively quiet as compared to the last several days, although today's range was no exception to that rule. It was a wide range nonetheless. We're going to go over the whole ball of wax. We're going to first take a look at the first thing that jumps off the page when you look at the daily chart. I'm leaving these particular trend lines on the screen for a reason which we'll get to in a few moments. From an intraday perspective, you're going to see how the market respects these numbers time and time again. Whether they're for an entry or an exit, we're able to use these numbers. And when I say we, it's inside the numbers members. We're able to use these numbers as a guideline. It was a pretty good day. In fact, it was a great day inside the numbers. There were plenty of members that were following right behind the tour guide today. We're going to take a look at that stuff a little bit later on. What jumps off the page at the daily chart other than the market crash that we just had? Speaking of which, let's just reiterate something we discussed last night, which is how long do these corrections normally last? Now, obviously this one was bigger than a bread box. It was like none other. But as a general rule, when the market tops out and finds a low to that first real definable low, how long does it take from peak to trough? And what we saw last night by looking at the prior three corrections is about a month. Could be longer, could be shorter. It's about a month. Where are we now? about a month was yesterday an important day yes it was why well you have to take the course to understand why yesterday was an important day time is more important than price and here's a side note by the way every time i say that i have a handful of people coming over the top saying you don't know what you're talking about time has nothing to do with it price is the absolute price is the only thing that's important I have news for that handful of people. You don't know what you're talking about. Sometimes we don't know what we don't know. And that's really the underlying point. We have to have an open mind with everything in life, but specifically with the market. The market is fluid. It changes every day. It's telling us new information all the time. If you don't have an open mind and you only have preconceived notions about what should happen, what you think should happen in the market, I have news for you. That's a recipe to not make money in the market. One of the hardest things that traders have to do and that they have a difficult time doing is admitting when they're wrong and cutting their losses. Cutting and running out of a trade sometimes is necessary, is one of the hardest things that traders have to learn along the process of becoming a successful trader. You have to learn how to take your lumps. All right, we got out of our lane for a second, so let's veer back to the middle. As far as this trader's concerned, the market came into a pretty good price area. It's wide, obviously. The market has been taking chunks of points. It's eating away at them like Pac-Man on steroids. Nevertheless, important price, important time. Have a little bit of a pseudo doji candle to deal with today. That's a good thing. Would have liked to see that at the low, but nevertheless, we have what we have. And we also have what I'll say is another important closing price today. Now, I would have loved to see for the bull case, I would have loved to see price close at or near the highs today, but they don't want to make it that easy. The primary job of the market is to make as many traders and investors look like fools as much of the time as possible. That's just the way it works. But not having closed near the highs the second best thing is to close above 240. Now there's a reason why 240 is a different color. It's fuchsia, I believe. Don't quote me on that one. It's because I believe it's an absolute important number. Closing above it today, I think, is a feather in the cap for the bull case. What else did we have on the board today? They didn't make a new low. And the reason why I say they didn't make a new low is because I think it's important. They had an opportunity to make a new low. They were heading lower earlier in the day. However, they recovered. We had a rescue operation and they recovered the market, keeping it away from the abyss. That's also a feather in the bull case. 
It's not lost on me. The feather goes in the cap. It's a feather in the cap for the bull case. All right, here's an intraday 15-minute chart. Everything to the right of the vertical line is today's activity. You know the routine. There's a number of things that I want to go over. The first thing is where that first candle is. 235.25 is that green line. Where was the low of the day today? Low of day is 232.80. Why is that important? Well, I don't expect you to have the answer. I'm going to give you the answer. Check this out. Here's inside the numbers. I'm starting in the middle. Early thoughts. This is what I put on the page before the open, but long after I've written out the pre-market morning notes. This generally goes on the board just a few minutes before the opening bell. You can read the whole thing at your leisure. What I want to point out is right in the middle, in the early going, we have SPY 233, give or take. So this is going on the board right about 10 minutes before the open. They must stay above specifically on hourly closes to stay away from another cascade decline. So right out of the chute, the low of the day is just a spike through that and they immediately bounce back. What does that tell you? There's a rescue operation underway. Did we have traders buy down there this morning? Yes, we did. Why? Because they believe in the numbers. What about the rest of the notes? Here's the pre-market version. I'm gonna let you read it on your own. For those of you that want to, you can pause the video whenever you want, restart it at your leisure. We'll take a look at stocks on the move after the notes. Let me scroll up and I'll have you read the rest. I am gonna highlight a couple of important things. As you can see throughout the day, throughout my commentary, I'm angling for looking for a low, right? We've been looking for a low. I'm angling on the long side. Pretty early on, we're already using the low of day, 232.22, as the bear bogey. We also know the important resistance areas up above, so we have to break one to get to the other. We know which ones they are, where they should run into overhead resistance. Let's move along a little bit. So we already picked off the SPY trade, and then what happens? And there's BAC. We'll get to that when we get to stocks on the move. We got to 240 in the SPY. You didn't have to buy the low. Once they had the low and they started in the other direction, we were starting to cite where the resistance areas were so that we can take profit along the way. By 10.08, there's your pop in JPM, also off the stocks on the move list. 38 minutes into the day, it's already a bonanza. Let's continue on, see the rest of the notes. Now at this point, you have to understand the mindset of a trader. I already won the 100 yard dash. I stuffed my pockets in a half an hour. I'm not exactly itching to get into another trade. I'll certainly get into another trade if one presents itself, but I'm not itching to get into a trade. You have to understand the mindset. You don't have to be in a trade. You wanna be in a trade when that trade is so good that you'd be embarrassed by not taking it. That's the mindset of a trader. Market comes back down. You can see 10.55 showtime for the bulls moving right along. We were talking about a pullback. Then they had a pullback, went back up, back to 245, an important number. That was an important number yesterday. It's an important number today. Inside the numbers members will remember 245. Here's the other thing that traders also, some realize, but others don't. You need to realize, in an environment like this, where we have huge swings in the market, everything pretty much moves together. We know that, not to the same magnitude, but when you look at it like this, take the SPY, the S&P 500. It's moving up, not a point or so, it's moving up four, five, six, seven points at a clip or down seven points at a clip or more, whatever it is on any particular part of any particular day. When that happens, a lot of the individual stocks move along with the S&P. Again, not to the same magnitude, but they generally move in the same direction for the same period of time. What's the point? The point is because stocks may be setting up for a specific move that you can identify something that's really right out of the course, lazy e-mini trader. So if I'm in the commentary saying, here's what's going to happen, here's where the resistance is, all that stuff, and you look over at Apple, and Apple's got a bull flag going, and it looks like it's going to break out of the bull flag along with the market on the rise, guess what? I might want to buy Apple instead of the S&P 500. I might get more bang for my buck. It's being a professional trader looking where the opportunity is, seizing the opportunity, moving right along. 
You can see 1255 as they continue to push higher after testing 240. Where's the spot where they will run into overhead resistance again? Same deal as before, 245. What if they get through? What happens? If they can get above SPY 246.37, which was a previous high, and stay up there, you can see a quick squeeze to 248, which is a gap. Closing hourly below 240, no dice. Moving right along. 153, there they go. Same resistance at SPY 245. If they can get through, they'll go for the gap. Now here's an interesting point. Pay attention to this one. It's a little early to hit the gap. They might come up short and leave it for later. Either way, those of you who participated, make sure you book profits along the way. Moving right along and into the end of the day. Let's go ahead and take a look at the stocks on the move list. We had two stocks hit their price target or entry target today. It was JPM and BAC. And by the way, here's another tell before the market even opened. So I'm looking at the opportunities that present themselves, which are stocks that are moving before the opening bell. So I'm looking around to see what's moving and by how much. And I can tell by the list that was being fed back to me and looking at my own list of stocks that I watch all the time, that stuff really wasn't trading down all that much. Even though the futures were wild overnight and we're in an environment where anything goes, stocks really weren't being sold in the pre-market. The bid was not down. Most were off a little bit, but it was just a little bit. It was an early tell. Now, let's go back to the 15-minute chart and review some of the movement that occurred today. Down here at the low, we talked about that one already. They come up and they bust through 240, come back to retest it, and everything is spiking through by a lot. That's just the way the market is right now. But you can see on a relative basis that they are respecting these numbers. Then they run up to 245 as prescribed inside the numbers. What happened at 245? They found what? overhead resistance why because that's where they should have why because that's where the resistance was yesterday on the first run it's going to happen again the majority of the time using the 80 20 rule they pull back to what 240 you see why i left these numbers on the screen i'm using them all day long bounce off 240 go back to what 245 a little bit higher they went for the gap and it's not the gap on this chart that i was talking about let me show you which gap it was. We'll talk numbers. First, let's get the high. They went to 247.38. I talked about the gap, and then I talked about them coming up short of the gap. Here's an hourly chart. This is the gap I was referring to. 248.04 is my number. Other people have a different idea of where a gap is filled. This is my number. I don't care what your number is. Don't take that personally. I'm talking to the people that have to disagree with everything I say. Why do I do that? Because it's fun. It makes me feel good. It's my show. Look at this hourly chart. Forget the gap. Look what's going on here pretty much all day today. Bouncing back and forth in between 245 and 240. Is that bullish or bearish? That's bullish. How do I know they're not going to have a huge gap down tomorrow? I don't know that. I'm just telling you what's on the chart right now in front of us. How did I know they were going to come up short of the gap? Because it's not my first rodeo. They do the same thing over and over and over again using the 80-20 rule. 80% of the time on the first run, they're going to come up short of the gap. Make traders think they're going to get to the gap. They never get there. They screw traders over. That's just the way it is. Does it happen every time? No. Can I read when it's likely to happen? Yeah, it was likely to happen today. That's why I put it in the notes. It's an awareness. You got to be out before the gap. That was the point in putting it in the notes. We're going to do more spider charts in a moment. First, we want to take a W with a couple of trades. Number on the board this morning, probably about 7 a.m., 1902 Bank of America. Low of day, 19 even. How you doing? High of day in the last candle, 21.75. How do you like them apples? Second trade, entry, JPM, 78.92 on the board early, in uniform, ready to go. Spike through a little bit. Low of day was 76.91. Takes off. What was the high? High of day, 88.11. Are you kidding me? Did I get anywhere near 10 bucks at a JPM? No, sir. Schmuck shirt. 
That's okay. A profit is a profit. You take whatever you can take and you keep the money in your pocket. That's how you run this as a business. 120 minute SPY chart. Interesting candle from yesterday around the lows below 230. It's a pseudo doji candle. I talk about these in the course along with many others. What do you do with a pseudo doji candle? Take the course. When are they important? Take the course. Here's another one. 240 minute chart. Nice reversal candle yesterday. Back to inside the numbers. Check out the middle, the 1028 post. Of note, check out the 240 minute SPY chart. There's a reversal candle on volume. It's a sign. That was from yesterday. Closing the current candle above the previous candle high, which is the reversal candle, will be bullish, period. So let's review this. So I'm giving you information that I'm identifying on the charts whenever and however I identify it. If I think it's valuable information, I'm going to put it out there. The high of this candle, 241.87, the close of the following candle by a nickel, it misses 241.82, Obviously, that's an important area. They did not close the next candle above that number either. However, by the fact that they're up there, they did make a couple of rally attempts, getting rejected at 245, or slightly above. Doesn't mean it's bearish, means it's not ready yet. What's going on down at the transportation department? Not that great. Not yet, anyway. So we have that tail candle from yesterday, and we have what I'll call a rally attempt today however it was something short of a dead cat bounce up a hundred points or 107 points but it's nothing in comparison to what they came down so it's really a meager attempt at a dead cat bounce the hourly chart is making a bull flaggish kind of pattern that may want to challenge up into the 50 period moving average and higher maybe this pivot high up here something around 7800 that's certainly possible there's a gap up here but if it's going to get that high, it needs more time to consolidate. It's not going to shoot out of here and go right up to that gap. A lot of work to do to get anything going in the transports. So here's the deal. Transports are my favorite canary in the coal mine, my second favorite market leading indicator. What's first? The IWM. Why did I skip the IWM? I'm going to get back to it. Hold your horses. We have to take note that the transports on a relative basis were weak today how do I explain that? Because on a relative basis, they were actually up more than the spiders and a lot of other indexes or indices for that matter. Here's how I'm going to explain it. Now, this is one of those, you're inside my head, so you're not going to find this in any book, any blog, website, TV, nothing like that. I have my two favorite market leading indicators. As far as I'm concerned, if the market was uber bullish right now, and it may be, it's just not all showing it yet. Things are still pretty dire out there. Let's call it what it is. But that doesn't excuse the fact that we're looking for a low. Now, a low could be a dead cat bounce that incorporates or involves or contains one hell of a rip your face off rally. I want to participate. I want my traders inside the numbers to participate. So here's what I'm saying. I have my two favorite market leading indicators. They've got to be in sync for this thing to really take off. They're not really in sync. The IWM had a tremendous day. Maybe it's an anomaly. Maybe it's not. But if the transports had the same or similar type of tremendous day, might have a different tune. I'm not buying the 100 point story. Not yet, anyway. Now here's the other side of that. When these markets are as beaten down like a pulp as they are, Sometimes you might expect them to just rally right out of here. Other times, it's like turning an aircraft carrier in the Hudson River. It's going to take a while. Now look at this, the IWM. They make a new low today, reverse, didn't finish on the high, but finished pretty darn good considering where they were early this morning. They took off on a rocket ride. Here's your hourly chart. That's a reversal, folks. Now... Maybe it sticks, maybe it doesn't, but on paper, that's a reversal. The candle I'm referring to is the one that made a new low. It's the first hourly candle of the day, making the new low, closing at 10.30. That's a reversal. Have I mentioned it was a reversal? Similar story in the queues, not from making a new low standpoint, just that they tried to rally and they were somewhat rejected, 
but it takes a while. So until and unless they make a new low, we're going to say yesterday's low across the board and other indexes today, that low is going to stick until and unless they get below and close the day below. Then in that case, I'm wrong. There'll be a different low at a different number, and I'll be the one with the pie in the face. That's okay. I'm okay with being wrong when you're looking for a low after the market got walloped for like 35%. It might take a time or two. But guess what? Guarantee you, when we pick off the low, we're going to be rewarded 10x. Any clues over in the XLF? Made a new low today? Finished not on the high? Near the high. Make a case that's a reversal. You can see where I'm going with this. When the, when the charts start to tell you something, you have to be open-minded enough to take the information, take it for what it is, at face value, and say, hey, if it walks like a duck, and talks like a duck, 80% of the time it's going to be a duck. About 20% of the time you could find an ugly duck or something else under the covers. But nevertheless, if you just take it at face value, use the 80-20 rule, there's another low. So you can see when we run through these charts, one after the other after the other, we're not seeing a lot of divergences out there. We're seeing a lot of things moving, not all of them at the same time, but a lot of them in tandem, in lockstep doing a lot of the same things. That's the market trying to tell you something. Could the trick, trap, fool, and frustrate crew show up in the morning and open the trap door again? Absolutely they could. And you know what? Even if they did, the market's not going to go that much lower. On a points basis, it may seem like a lot of points. On a percentage basis, they're almost done. If not, done yesterday. Smash Mouth, we didn't make a new low today. However, another market that tried to rally... Didn't necessarily close at or near the highs, but you have to take a positive out of it. Didn't make a new low. Had an opportunity to go down, had an opportunity to collapse, had an opportunity to make a new low. Didn't do it. That's at least some relative strength. Hourly chart shows another one of those bull flaggish patterns trying to develop. We had a little bit of a sell-off into the close across the board, not only in the SMH, but across the board. Is that meaningful? Is that some profit taking? Is that trick and company or the trick trap fool and frustrate crew? It could be anything. It's hard to read into the last, let's say, 15, 20, even 30 minutes of the day. The market does move in that time period. However, a lot of times it becomes a crapshoot, a coin toss. Are they going to jam them up into the close on a short squeeze or are they going to open the trap door and kill them into the close? Sometimes they'll do either way. If you want to play it, most of the time it's a guessing game. Sometimes the market tells you it indicates based on pattern, based on what it's doing, based on certain levels it might be above, sometimes or below. Sometimes the market's going to indicate that's what it's going to do. But a lot of times it'll just get haywire into the end of the day, becomes a coin toss, and you're essentially gambling or making a bet. I'd rather just be a spectator most of the time. Have I told you how much I appreciate each and every one of you and that without you these videos are not possible? All true, and now as important as ever. With that being said, it's everything that I wanted to and intended to discuss today, so I'll give it a wrap here. As I like to say, we'll pull the ripcord. I'm David Frost, my strategic forecast. Thanks for tuning in for another episode of Common Sense Market Analysis.